First of all, thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity in five minutes to share a little bit about some of the programs and projects that we are doing at UNEP's Caribbean Environment Program. And just for clarification, yes, we are also affectionately known as the UNEP Jamaica Office. We are one of UNEP's administered 18 regional seas programs, and we are also the Secretariat for the Cartagena Convention, including the protocols on pollution, oil spills, and biodiversity. Um, our main objectives, and I pulled this out from our convention and our action plan as a whole, are to facilitate cooperation in scientific research, monitoring, and data and information exchange. One of the key things we assist the governments in doing is reporting on measures that they have undertaken, either at the national level or the regional level, to implement the convention and the protocols. And the main focus areas are on coastal and marine biodiversity protection and on pollution prevention and reduction methods. And one of the, we, we've heard mention of, of this report before. We don't actually have our first state of convention area report as yet, but it is a mandate within the convention for us to prepare such a report which is supposed to highlight the main status and trends. And, and that, I think, is one of the very key significant linkages with CMA um, Phase 2, in particular as we've been able to identify some initial seed funding to be able to start this process. Um, what are some of the mechanisms through which we work? We have biennial work programs, and you heard mention of one of our key meetings being our intergovernmental meeting of, 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 um, of all the member states, and we have one coming up at the second week of December this year, meeting of contracting parties of the convention, a very critical uh, decision-making body in which certain issues such as um, what we're discussing over the week take place. We also are responsible for implementing and executing a range of global environment facility funded projects. And you've heard mention of a few of them here. We've been involved in several. And, and part of the challenge of those projects as we'll hear is all of them are calling for clearinghouse mechanisms, databases, information systems, nationally, regionally, globally, and, and how do we manage to link and make all these things functional, especially after the project ends. And, and we've been very um, outspoken in terms of the importance of partnerships. And when we looked at the list of this, for example, it, it's essentially what we are trying to promote as a secretariat. We don't want to be the be-all and end-all. We don't want to manage all the databases, but we certainly want to be able to point to where they exist and be able to have uh, decision-making tools that can assist governments. So what have we generated from many of the projects? And many of the partners here have actually helped us in some of these outputs. A, a range of technical reports on the state of the environment, both regionally, sub-regionally, and nationally. Uh, we are a regional convention secretariat, so unfortunately, yes, we also have a reporting template, but we're trying to simplify this a, as a means of gathering information as to what's happening in the region. Uh, we have created, through many of the projects, a range of databases uh, from some of our, our pesticide, for example, our Jeff Pesticide Project. We created a database with Invimar. Uh, we created a clearinghouse mechanism for small islands, which is now housed on our server. And we have a range of atlases, guidelines, manuals, websites. We have an interactive tool on, on, uh, on oil ship and maritime movement through the region managed by our oil spill center in Curacao. So there's, again, a lot of information. How do we link? How do we manage? How do we not duplicate what we already have? And of course, the topical term now is that we're creating knowledge management products. So how do we make sure that we have access to all of these? And this is just an example, and to take the point in terms of the data and technology platforms, uh, we have gotten some feedback from some countries that the scale is critical, local, national, regional, and it's not always that the platform allows the decision-making at the level that it needs to happen. So we have to think about that in terms of what platform do we work with. Uh, we are very keen, when we heard about UNEP Live, to certainly see, and, and we have a commitment to see how what we are building on at the regional level can actually feed into UNEP Live, and you'll hear a bit more about UNEP Live uh, from my colleague from, from ROLAC in Panama afterwards. But this is going to be very key. How do we select these platforms? How do we sustain them? How do we manage them? And again, this is just an example of the kinds of partnerships that we did when we generated coastal and marine data under a range of our projects. And you would see um, several uh, project 
emblems, project logos, um, the, our integrating watershed management project for small islands, our pesticide project in Central America, our collaboration with the Atomic Energy Agency. But I want to plug there what these projects focusing mainly on coastal and marine monitoring emphasized again, the data sensitivity, in particular of data that is considered for whatever reason as, as being very um, not that easy to share, maybe implications for tourism, maybe implications for public perception, and also the lack of, in many countries, both a national and regional uh, policy on data sharing and ownership. And, and again, these are just two things that came out from our experiences. So how do we see potential collaboration in terms of, of, of moving forward? Uh, we certainly see our, our forum as, as offering an opportunity to what I believe we should be doing this for, to improve and enhance decision-making processes in the region. And therefore, to be able to use these mechanisms so that the bodies can actually work on making better decisions. We actually have a network of technical focal points, technical agencies, experts that we believe can also help in providing input and reviewing some of the outputs. And basically, I very much emphasize that we need to build on what we already have. And the State of Convention Area Report is just one such framework. So thank you very much, and um, open to questions. Okay, please, thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, Johanna, please.